Okay, well now that you set up your Zero account, we are ready to start playing around with some of the settings and features, toggling them on and off. The first thing you're going to notice is it says you're currently using a trial account, upgrade now. You have 30 days for the trial account and my recommendation is use those 30 days if needed be to set up your zero account to set up any additional software to go through this course do all the things you need to do to get everything up and running but when you're ready to start doing the bookkeeping and categorizing transactions after you set up once you hit that point I go ahead and recommend you to upgrade to a paid plan and just one thing of note there when you're ready to upgrade you might want to, um, I, I believe Zero is almost always doing some sort of promo code, something like that. I think right now they have six months for half off. If you're looking to save a little money, go out there and look for a promo code. Maybe reach out to me if need be and um, take advantage of that uh, during the upgrade. But So let's say for right now we want to continue with the trial account. The next step really is... Uh, is to turn our attention towards this getting started using zero tile. This box auto populates when you create an account and it has a series of useful links and things to help you uh, get a little bit more acquainted with zero. But being that we are going through a training course on how to set it up, I'm gonna recommend you just go ahead and hide this so it's not a distraction. You can hide it just this one time, and as a one-time case, you can click this X button. But if you go to the top, to the question mark, you'll find this other feature, Hide Getting Started, and it'll remove that box for you. Once we have done that, we really need to turn our attention towards some of your general settings. What I'm going to have you do is go to Users, and... What you're going to notice here is you'll see your name, you should see subscriber, and you should see a series of permissions. And how Xero works is, as an accountant setting up a new software, a new account, it's going to give me permissions as an advisor, and you should have all the other ones. But what you're probably going to notice for yourself is it's probably going to say standard non-cash coding under permissions, and that is really, really important. That's a very powerful feature that Xero um, kind of reserves or sets aside for accountants and later on in my training videos I show you how to use cash coding and so I'm going to recommend you go ahead and click on your name and if it isn't already if most of the time it should look like this standard non-cash coding view all reports what I recommend you do is just go ahead and make yourself an advisor on the account and that'll give you an opportunity to take advantage of some of the more powerful features within Xero. And uh, yeah, so now that you've done that, go ahead and click Save. And what'll happen is at the top, you should have a new drop down menu that says Advisor. If not, that means you didn't quite make something, you'll have to go back. But once you made yourself an advisor, you set yourself up in a good place to uh, get some, take advantage of some of the more powerful features. What we're going to do next, and kind of the final feature settings we're going to toggle is in the chart of accounts. So we'll click settings, then chart of accounts. What you notice here is there's a whole list of different accounts that you can categorize transactions to, whether that's expenses, revenues, etc. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on what this is. I do that in the training course. But what you'll see here is there's a series of one, two, three duplicate type accounts. And um, you'll see inventory one, inventory two, three, etc. And as you go down the list, you'll see even more of those. I've specifically built the chart of accounts with duplicates in mind so that as you grow and you have more, um, I guess, financial situations where you might need more accounts, there are some duplicates built in so you don't have to build all those from scratch. But for right now, what I want to do is I don't want these duplicates to clog up your uh, chart of accounts, so we're just going to go ahead and archive them. And to do that, you're just going to click the button next to the duplicates, pretty much anything over one, so two, three, four, five, etc. 
um, is what you're going to end up archiving. As a secondary option, I'm on a Mac computer. If I press Command F and type in duplicate, you'll see it'll highlight duplicate in the descriptions. So that's maybe a good way for you to find all the duplicates quickly. I believe on a Windows it's Control F. And uh, anyhow, I'm not going to go through all the duplicates. You should find 41 duplicates as the time of this recording. What you're going to end up doing is highlighting them and then click Archive. Once you click Archive, there will be a confirmation box. We'll click OK. And what that will do is it will remove all those duplicates from the active accounts and will be tucked away into the Archive button or the archive tab I should say and now once they're in the archive tab let's say you move along you realize you know what I'd like to create a secondary inventory account what we can do here is click this button and then click restore and once we hit restore it's gonna say one account has been restored we'll go back to all of our accounts and you'll notice inventory 2 a duplicate is now tucked away into our all accounts and uh, one final note here is, if you'd like to change the name on any of these one, two, three accounts, you're more than welcome to. This is all for internal purposes. You simply click the blue link, change the name, and click Save. So that's, got, that's a wrap on most of the major settings. And in the next video, we're going to turn towards getting your bank accounts all set up.